everyone. Welcome back to the Weekly Entertainment Bubble. I'm your host and MyHighPlanes.com correspondent, Aaron Rosas. We're, of course, again, recapping all the top trending topics for the week. It's been a long week, so I hope this brings you guys some joy. Summer has been going by super quick, but for some reason, this week has been going by very slow for me. So I hope this helps you guys out as much as it helps me out. Uh, let's do a quick rundown. We are going to be talking about Jennifer Lopez's wedding ceremony to Ben Affleck. Sylvester Stallone and his wife Jennifer Flavin are set to be divorced. The wife filed and the top 10 highest grossing rom-coms of all time we will discuss. Okay, so let's start out with the big news. This gets me excited and also a little repetitive. I feel like I'm talking about them a lot. I really like JLo, but they had their wedding ceremony with all the family and friends. This comes after their Vegas quick wedding. So they're already married. They're just doing a ceremony. How is this happening? And you know what? I'm, I'm probably jealous. That's why... <laughs> That's why I'm maybe a little salty or something that I'm just like, Ugh. but she looked incredible. I want to give you guys a quick look at her dresses. Hold on. Let me pull it up really quick. Here are her dresses. She had a really pretty one right here. I think it looks great. They're all from Ralph Lauren. These images are incredible. Obviously, she looks incredible. So she had three different gowns by Ralph Lauren and yeah, I mean, what else do you expect? It's Jennifer Lopez. It's going to be over the top. It's going to be huge and amazing. I don't know how many more she can do. I'm pretty sure this is it. I'm hoping this is it. All their kids were there. His three kids, her two kids. They're all there. Their friend, Kevin Smith, who I learned from a friend of mine in the newsroom, that him and Ben Affleck did a lot of movies together, you know, so I didn't know that they were that close, Kevin Smith and him, and he said it was a great wedding, so yeah, of course it's going to be great. It was in Georgia, huge acre um, land, that's where they had their ceremony, and good luck to them, I think, you know, oh, reminder, Ben Affleck's brother, Casey Affleck, was not in attendance. They said he was with this kid, and but he sent his um, love on Instagram and posted something, a throwback of them when they dated in the early 2000s. He looks very young, Casey Affleck, and they look like a young couple and they're just strolling around. So Casey Affleck did send his love, but was not at the wedding. Okay, I want to move on to another celebrity divorce, you guys. It's going to be happening every week, I'm sure, but this one is after 25 years. Sylvester Stallone and his wife, Jennifer Flavin, are going to get divorced. That's how it looks right now anyways, as Jennifer filed for divorce. After 25 years, they have three daughters and all their daughters are, you know, I would say adults. Their youngest is 20 and then their oldest is 25 and I just did a little research and I found that a couple days ago, so the the divorce was announced yesterday, a couple days ago, he had covered up a tattoo of his wife's face on his arm with their dog and no one really thought anything of it, you know, because his dog passed away. And then bam, next day it was announced they're getting divorced. And so we should have seen that coming, right? Like all the the nature of the occurrences of events, it just definitely seemed like something was going on. If you cover your wife's face up with a dog tattoo, that that's kind of cringeworthy and sad and um, a lot. But he says it has nothing to do with the dog. They did not. They're not getting divorced because of the dog. But it's kind of crazy that, you know, that whole cover-up situation. Um, they just celebrated their 25th anniversary three about three months ago. And she had posted stuff on Instagram like, oh, this is incredible. Our marriage is great. This is the love of my life. And they, they marked the milestone 25th. And then, yes, they are getting divorced. So sad news for them. Good luck to them in the future. Sylvester Stallone is single. So I don't know if he's ready to mingle, but he's single. So there you go. 
we'll see what happens there. Okay, so I want to finish here really quick with an article I wrote over on myhighplanes.com. Top 10 highest grossing rom-coms of all time. This one gets me very excited because number one is one of my all-time favorite movies. My Big Fat Greek Wedding. I love that movie. It is fantastic. I think I watch it probably four times a year and I laugh every time the ant is hysterically funny. So I think it's an incredible rom-com and that made it to number one. So that gets me excited and super happy. Other m things to mention on this, other movies, let me pull this up for you guys really quick. Um, yeah, here we go. So Sex and the City is at number 10. I'll do a real quick rundown. You guys can kind of see how much it grossed right here on the side. And so Sex and the City, we have Jerry Maguire at number nine. The Proposal at number eight, which is an incredible movie. I mean, Sandra Bullock needs to be in every single rom-com, I think. Then we have Crazy Rich Asians at number seven, deservably, 174 million. There's something about Mary, movie from the 90s, 176 million, Pretty Woman, Hitch, which is a bit of a surprise. And this one is very surprising, What Women Want. That surprises me. It came out in 2000. It really surprises me, but I mean, it made a ton of money. Mr. and Mrs. Smith and number one, My Big Fat Greek Wedding. You can find this over on myhighplanes.com and just search top 10 rom-coms. It should pop up. So there is the list. And I think there wasn't many surprises. There was a couple that I'm like, really? And a couple that for me didn't make the list. For instance, When Harry Met Sally, my mom loves that movie. That did not make the list. There's a ton of rom-coms that people in the news station were saying, why wasn't this one there? 50 first dates, like a lot of rom-coms that did not even, I don't think made the top 15. So that's probably where the surprise is at, right? That some of these movies really grossed a lot of money and some of the, a lot of them I didn't even see. People might kill me for this, but I didn't see Crazy Rich Asians, which may surprise some people, but I did not watch it. But I hear it's incredible. I think it said it had a, which one of these movies had like a 91% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. It did really good. Um, oh, Crazy Rich Asians had 91% positive rating on Rotten Tomatoes. So good for it. And please, you guys, check that out on myhotplanes.com. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode. I will see you guys next Friday. Have an incredible weekend. See you guys later. Yeah.